Hey there fellow nerd geeks and makers, I'm Mark and today I'm working on my biggest, most ambitious project yet. I'm going to finish my build of this 60cm Star Destroyer, fully illuminated. Keep watching. It goes without saying, if you haven't seen part one of this video, then go watch it. In part one, I started off by building this Ravel model kit of an Imperial Star Destroyer and then working to drill hundreds, if not thousands of tiny holes into the hull of the ship, threading hundreds of meters of optic fiber through it, heaps of LEDs and connecting them all together. To get this bad boy finished, we're going to need to do a custom paint job across the entire hull and then make a nice stand that fits the quality and effort that has gone into this build. Let's just jump straight into the build video, shall we?
Okay, that was a heck of a lot to do. The entire build was over the course of two months and probably took me around 80 hours to do. That is a lot of time to spend on a single model. So let's talk about what went well and what went poorly with this build. You'll notice in the build that I pre-shaded a lot of areas with the airbrush. As it turned out, this effect was far too subtle to work well. And if I was going to do it again, I'd probably do a much thinner top coat of paint on the model, as much as 50% thinner. The paint just wasn't thin enough to make the pre-shading worthwhile. The painting went quite smoothly, despite me using up more than one or two bottles of the Vallejo Air light gray acrylic. After this was a huge moment, trimming back the LED and optic fibers to their final length. And it was nerve wracking because up to this point, I didn't know if this was actually going to work. And it turns out I had absolutely nothing to stress out about as it looks amazing. This was immediately followed by a gloss clear coat to protect the paintwork, protect the fiber optics and allow me to get started on the weathering. I hit a bit of a snag when I hit weathering, which was that the panel lines of the model were almost imperceptible. In fact, I can't even feel them with my fingertip right now. But after discussing this option on Twitter, a fellow by the name of Graffit suggested that I just try a pencil. Penciling in the panel lines though did take me a couple of days of work, and once it was done I used an enamel thinner in order to scrub down the pencil and panel lines to this neat look. Because I'd used an acrylic gloss, the enamel thinner does not affect that gloss coat at all, and I could use it pretty much as much as I like. And the model is now ready for the engine lights. I used seven high blue LEDs for the engine lights and hot glued them in place, which was the easiest and most efficient way I could think of to secure them. And it also helped to diffuse the LED glow a little bit to make them more engine-like. And I'm very happy with how these turned out. At this point, I was nearing the end of my project, as the Star Destroyer is pretty much complete. All we needed to do was manufacture a custom base and connect the model to the base. I whipped up this basic model in Fusion 360 that was a hexagon with the Imperial logo on top of it. I put a 10mm hole in the middle for the aluminium tube that I'd purchased and I'd also left an 8mm hole in there for the actual power supply. I printed all of this out on my Ender 3 FDM printer out of PLA filament and hit both of them with XTC 3D and a primer and then after that, sand it down to reduce the appearance of layer lines. I hit it with a black spray paint and then I rubbed it down with silver rub and buff to give it this worn metallic look. Then I threaded the aluminium rod and the power supply through and epoxied the whole thing together. This went really smoothly, but I did learn a couple of things along the way. And that's that I probably should have printed the base hexagon and the Imperial logo separately as this would have made sanding that much faster and probably given a little bit better results. So, that is my build, and I am both amazed and thrilled at how well this project has actually turned out. I'm also amazed at the response that I've had on social media. When I first tweeted out, the finished image of this Star Destroyer received a ridiculous amount of attention, to the point where I simply had to disable Twitter notifications for a couple of days. I felt a little bad about that as I mentioned a couple of people in my original post, and those people would have been absolutely flooded with notifications. That's it for this video. If you have any suggestions on any other techniques that might have been more effective, or if you have a suggestion on what I should be building next, drop me a comment down below as I would love to hear from you. If you like the build and want to see what more of what I'm doing in the workshop in the future, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.